I'm great. How are you? Good. Good, good, good. I'm gonna stop the recording. I don't know why this is recording, but I don't no, know. No, we are gonna... we are recording. Oh, We're you guys recording. are okay. Well, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. So good afternoon, amazing teaching artists. I'm so excited to see you all. Before we get started, because we are um recording, if all of you can make sure that you are on mute, that your microphones are on mute. I would greatly appreciate that. Again, Aisha Mobley, program manager here at Harvard Perform. So great to see you all today in this actually quite mild February day, which is amazing. Um, so thank you again for taking the time out of your day to join us for the AP quarterly meeting. This is session two of the Blueprint series, so the Back to Basics, um, working on creating a lesson plan or a program plan for your programs. In the near future, Hartford Performs will be um, transitioning to, to having lesson plans or program plans um, in the database as we market your program, or as, actually, excuse me, as you market your programs. But we will be moving towards more of a of a plan um, that is easy for our teachers to read, easy for board members um, and district friends and, and uh, connections to be able to take a look at your programs from beginning to the very end. So thank you again for joining us. Um, those of you that have already submitted um, your beginning stages of your lesson plans, they look fabulous. So thank you so much for sending them. Um, we're going to continue on um, with session two. And so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our amazing facilitator. She is one of our own teaching artists, Janika Brown Springer from Heartbeat. Um, she is going to be doing uh, session two with us and then session three in a couple months. So without further ado, as already mentioned, I will go ahead and turn it over to Janika. And again, thank you all for coming and enjoy this afternoon's workshop. Hello, hello. Awesome. Oh, we have changed my view. I could see everybody before. Okay. <laughs> uh, do I also have sharing abilities? Making we will make that happen for you. You did. Thank You're a you. co-host. You're a co-host. I was just spotlighting you. I'll pin you. Oh, no sorry. Worries. Sorry. <laughs> Welcome, 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 welcome back to those of you who are with me partying for the first round with our hamburger templates. Uh, raise the roof if you were there and you know what I'm talking about when I talk about a hamburger template. Okay, all right, just making sure. <laughs> Some of you may have watched the video. If you did not, you're welcome to watch it. You'll also get a sneak peek at said hamburger again today. Um, but caveat, we cannot submit hamburgers to Aisha and Emily. <laughs> see them shaking their heads no. So we will make sure that we are putting it all into an official, more formalized template. And we're actually gonna start working on that today. Um, but if the visual is helpful, if the analogy works for you, uh, you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. So quick accessibility check, thumbs up that you can hear me. Yes, we're doing okay. All right, great. <clears throat> and make sure you've got some water next to you, your favorite pencil next to you, whatever you need to make sure that you are with me today and comfortable. Uh, this is gonna feel a lot like a work session because I also have to put a template together for a couple of lessons, right? So we'll be working on this together um, as we move throughout the session. Let's warm up. I know we just had some dancing going on and that's probably why I'm like, let's do more, let's do more stuff. <laughs> so if you've got some space, I'm actually gonna stand up so you can push your chair in, you can stand up and join me. Um, so last session, we were able to do our JDPP, Justice Dance Performance Project warm up. This is the one that we start classes with every time. And I'm going to start with that one again today. So let's do it. I'm tempted to say play more music, Aisha. That was great. <laughs> Go ahead and find yourself a comfortable space. DJ that was DJ Wineski. <laughs> find another DM for us. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Once you find yourself a comfortable space, we start with our hands together, rubbing them together, making them nice and warm. We are creating fur 
friction. And a lot of students might know that word and they might not. It wants your hands feel nice and warm. We're gonna pass that energy up and wake up our arms. Most of my classes are in the morning and I'll say good morning to my arms. And good Now this is a challenge because if you have an I, you still have to jump and dot your I. <laughs> You've got a T slash as well, but you're gonna spell your whole first name using your hips. Everybody ready? Here we go. Check. I dot my I. Okay. A. Thumbs up when you're done. Nice, awesome. I was gonna say, some of you probably have some very short names. I have a lot of letters. <laughs> We've done middle names, we'll do last names. <laughs> awesome, we can find our way back. Are we thoroughly warm? Are we ready? Excited about writing lesson plans? So exciting, so exciting. It's actually one of my favorite things to do, which is pretty fun. <laughs> Shanika, I will I will say really quickly, it's the first time that I've done this experience in a car. And I'm on New Park Avenue as I'm watching people around me, parents waiting for their kids, watching me do all of this in the car. So this was amazing. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Arm rolls and everything, right? <laughs> Can you do the hips while you're sitting down? I love it. <laughs> Fabulous. Okay. So quick review. Doo, doo, doo. So today we are getting to the meat of the lesson, right? We did kind of the burger bun situation on our hamburger lesson plans before, and we're getting to the heart of it today, really to the meat and how that works. So my hope is to really focus on verbs that we can use in lesson plans, sequential order. You all know how to do that, but it's also really good to take time to think about it and write it down. And maybe you'll adjust the order a little bit as you're going. We're going to talk a little bit about time management and maybe even get to some transitions and some activities that we do. Um, so now that we've done our warm up, if you have your hamburger bun, go ahead and pull it out. If you started typing a lesson plan, pull that up. If you're techie like me and have two computer screens, <laughs> you can have more than one thing on a screen. And I am going to pull up mine as well. Share screen option. I think I saw a hand for a question. No? Uh, 
Nicholas. I see your mouth moving. So I thought you were asking me a question. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Ah, there we go. Answered my question. I didn't hear the question, what? No, I didn't get the first video. I didn't get to watch it. And um, cause I wasn't sure I was gonna be staying with the program. So um, I should have watched it anyways. I actually got a. I got a job through doing Hartford Performs at a school. They hired me full time based on my program. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you. I mean, I was going to tell her. I just thought I, I, I did my last program for Hartford Performs. And then the one I did before that, they um, basically hired me on the spot as an art teacher. That's amazing. So that was for uh, Global Communications. Oh, yeah. My old school, global. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very yeah, cool. I love We're it. I love it. Your, your love expertise working. in the room, then, as we are putting these lessons together, you'll be helping us, right? So let's continue. If you don't no, have go any ahead. I'm, I'm still with the program. I still want to stay with Hartford Perform. So <laughs> I love it. Cool. If you don't have the template already, you can go ahead and just draw yourself one. That's yeah, fine. I was going to just do that now. That's why I said like that just answered my question. So sorry, I'll take myself off. No worries. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Make sure I can see. There we go. Get my gallery view back over here. Great. So we did this hamburger bun last time to just get it started. Uh, we talked about those objectives. What are those learning targets? They might be called something a little different depending on the school, right? But for my example, because I was working on JDPP, I taught a Moving Matters program. Students will name one way to help our community. And the students are going to define and demonstrate what a tableau is, right? So we read a book. They have to actually create some theater and some movement. And then I know their final goal is going to be putting some sort of movement together. So those are just my goals. Whatever those goals are should then match the end in, our, in the reflection questions that you're asking. Who remembers one way we can help the community from our story or some of them actually added in their own examples? What is a tableau? And I'll ask them to repeat it to me. What was fun or challenging about creating tableaus with your group? If there's time, I might ask them something a little bit deeper like that. So they're reflecting on their own experience, right? Um, so I'm going to move this. I think all of you have this down for the most part. <clears throat> so I actually created a little template for JDPP, yay. So if you have a moment to create your template, I like using um, the table so that everything kind of fits in its own box. But if you wanna make it more of an outline, that's okay. And you kind of give it these different headers so we know which program you're talking about, the title, pick one grade level that you're gonna focus on for this lesson plan, those objectives and goals I just listed. I'm actually gonna just type them in there today for our work session. And we're going to talk about activities, reflection questions at the end, and we'll do our routine um, for the next session. But I will go ahead and give you a second to do that. Some of you, I see typing, I see some writing happening. I know Emily is in the chat, so if you do have questions that you would like to ask or if you would like to unmute, you can always raise your emoji hand. We're happy to call on you. So I'll see some people writing. I'll give you one more minute. You'll definitely want to choose a plain font style, a decent size. I think this is size 12. I like bolding my headings. You may want to try bullet points. That's okay too. And actually there might be some other headings that you haven't, that I don't have here, right? If I was doing a visual arts program, I might need a materials box. So as you start to create yours, think about those areas too. And then give me a little emoji thumbs up when you have your template ready. And actually, I'm going to type mine in here as well. Can you scroll down a little, please? Sure. Thank you. I can probably 
shrink it. Let's see, does that help? Yeah, now you can see all the boxes. Uh, this is nope, not where that goes. No one matters. Level, I think the top grade five. I did my goals and objectives. I like the starters, students will. So you'll see that on most of my lesson plans. And then these were from last time, our reflection questions, and they are matching my objectives. I'm just typing them in the box. Students will define and demonstrate a tableau. What is a tableau? All right, thumbs up when you're ready. One thumb, turn to my second page. Oh, we are still typing, okay. Shall I keep going? So raise your hand if you have ever heard of Bloom's taxonomy. Couple hands, couple hands. Okay, all right. We're gonna take a look at some of those objectives, but also as we're writing in the order of what we're doing, what are these main activities? What are the verbs that we're choosing to use? So I'm going to shift from this page, but I will be coming back to it, okay? All right, there's my hamburger again. Blooms. Does this look familiar? Normally, it's in the shape of a pyramid. This one, they actually expanded some of the verbs for you, so you already have examples there. Oh, can you see my chat box? <laughs> there we go. If you just want students to remember something, it might sound more like repeat, identify, right? But as we start to move up the taxonomy list, the understanding list here, you'll see some different verbs um, coming into play. Are we explaining and summarizing? Do you want them to do something like illustrate or practice? Are they actually categorizing or distinguishing? Are they assessing something um, or even inventing and developing, right? So the verbs you choose to use I would love to see like an array, an array of them. If you find all of your objectives or all of your um, activities are all starting with the same verb, switch it up. Give you these for a moment. Again, I know Emily is in the chat if you've got questions. See some people writing, I'll give you a sec. Am I good to keep going? 
can always come back down to these if we need them again. Or you're welcome to open another tab on your computer and Google Bloom's taxonomy so you can have some ideas too on which verbs you might like to use. I'm going back to my lesson plan now because we are going to start writing. So what actually happens in your lesson, right? You know that I have a warm up. It goes first. Fuck. My, my numbers are moving. Ignore the numbers. I will reformat that. <laughs> but you should also be typing your own, right? So we might have a warm up. I know that that's going to involve. We might practice balance. We might do different shapes or levels. We're going to talk about centering ourselves okay on day one I might be reading the story I'm going to expand that again and putting in the title of the book that I might have there three I do day one and day two. They are going to start creating their tableau. And then in the community. Actually, I do it in the story first. And then we'll talk about the community. I know there's a share out that happens at the end of their tableaus. All right. So as you're writing, think about the order that you might put things in typically, or if you need to shift that order, you can. We good so far? Okay, so in my lesson plan, I don't normally put the transitions that I'll use between activities, but that does take time, right? So as you're thinking about, well, how long do I use this warm up for? Uh, this might be about five minutes. Uh, how long are we actually reading this book? I think it takes us 15 minutes. Start to put those timings next to it, but remember, you're also going to have some transition time that's going to happen too, right? Because you want it to add up to how much time you're actually going to be in the class. And I know that's different for everybody. Not everyone is there multiple sessions. Some of ours are 30 minutes versus 50. Um, so you just want to make it add up to whatever you need. Click add my timings. I think our tableaus, I try to keep it about here. And then our share out is a little bit faster. And I might have my reflection questions into that. 30, 40, 45. Okay, I'm right on it. Thumbs up when you've got your timings, you've got your activities down. Okay. So I would love to ask too, has anyone found that there are some parts of your lesson that are longer or shorter than you expected them to be. See some nods, I see some nods. <laughs> if folks would like to share, you are more than welcome to because I know that also will affect your timing, right? And there's some shifts that you might have to make. Not quite ready to share yet. That's okay, we can come back to that part. <laughs> so once you have your timings down, I'm actually gonna go down to my next thing that I would like to show you. Now we've got blooms, we've seen that already. How do your timings match up with this? You have seen this before? Teaching with the brain in mind, it is by Eric Jensen. Do your timings match up with this? Are you surprised by this? No, I see some no's. Nobody's surprised about this. <laughs> I also find that now, like post-COVID life, these timings feel a little different too. That attention span has definitely changed. 
but go back and look at your timings on your lesson plan. Are they in alignment with this? Do you feel like, eh, I might need to make something longer or maybe shorter nowadays? What are your thoughts on this? Is this surprising? I see, I see some nodding of heads who would like to share. Janika, can you clarify what direct instruction means? Mm, absolutely. That is the time when you are actually speaking. You want them to be list active listeners and they are sitting and listening to you, not doing things. So direct instruction is just you talking at them. And we don't want that to be for too long of a time. You want to model it and then also have them practice those things, right? There might be small groups. There might be other things happening. But we don't want to be talking at students for 45 minutes. We have to make sure we're breaking up those activities. All right, I'm going back up here. Checking in. So how are we doing with these timings now? Yep, I see some people writing. I see some adjusting that's happening. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. and do you mind if I ask an, an observation question to the group, Janika? I'm sorry, you were breaking up. Say that again. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Do you mind if I ask a question to the group? Please. Uh, so this awesome uh, lesson plan example, Janika starting with the objectives, and we can see how they tie to the reflection questions. Um, can you give me, um, what do you notice? What do you notice about the activities and how they relate? to the objectives. You can either put it in the chat or unmute. How are the activities related to the objectives? So her first objective is that the hope is that students will be able to name ways that they can help in their community. So what activities in her main session are going to help students be able to name ways that they can help within the community? What is she doing that's going to help them think about ways to help within their community? Are we familiar with this book? That could be the issue. Could be. Could be. And, I, I and that's a... Could be that, right? So this is our story that we have to read. It's called Change Sayings by the amazing Amanda Gorman. And we would actually take time to read some of the parts of this book. Let's see if I can find some good examples in here. I'm a chant that rises and rings. There is hope where my change sings. And I'll have them actually look at the pictures. What is the student doing? How are they helping? How are they feeling, right? We'll be reflecting as we go along. There goes another good one. Though some don't understand it, those windmills of mysteries, I sing with all the planet and all its hills of histories. Let's see, what are we seeing? I see some comments in the chat. Uh, Santa is saying that the book must have info on what happens as it relates to the tableaus they're being asked to make. Barbara Washer, I imagine that the story gives examples and shows illustrations. 
Yes, absolutely. So students will be pointing out, oh, I see this boy and he's picking up litter in his neighborhood. Yep. The next page would give us a different example. I hum with a hundred hearts, each of us lifting a hand. I use my strengths and smarts. I take a knee to make a stand. Huh, what's happening with this family, right? And we'll reflect on that, I'll go this way. Well, what is she doing now? How is she helping her community, right? And then same. <laughs> Maybe to see that one. All right, she's singing music. She must be bringing groceries to the elderly. So the story is filled with lots of those examples and some amazing vocabulary, tolerance and other things. So those would all be coming up. Maybe now they can answer your question, Emily. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. true, right? Everyone's you familiar with the book, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Grace says, what are examples that you've seen about students helping in the community, right? So maybe there's some reflection questions that Janika has that aren't explicitly spelled out in this uh, lesson. But certainly the story relating then seeing examples of how to help in the community so then the other goal uh, objective, students will define and demonstrate a tableau. What activity directly relates to that? When, that one's maybe a little bit more obvious. Bob says it looks like students will generate ideas and suggestions. Uh, will be generated from the students themselves, giving ownership over the activity. Absolutely. And sometimes they want to create things directly from the story, and sometimes they have ideas. Oh, this is how I would help my neighborhood, though. Oh, I wish there were more crossing girds, one student said the other day. So that was part of their tableau. So we can see, I can see in the warm up. Uh, that Janika is covering pieces of making a tableau, levels, balance, shapes with the body, right? And then they're creating the tableau and the story. So there's some, what is a tableau is defined for them before making that, act, doing that activity. Right, so those two objectives are explicitly reached in the activities. They should be connected. All right. Sorry, Janika. Thank you. No apologies. That's a great question. And I guess a question for me as I'm also developing this lesson plan and like trying to formalize what is this template uh, for all of you, should this be more explicit than Emily? Like what is your advice on that? You know, if a teacher were to see this lesson plan and not know what the story is about or, oh, this is going to this says they're going to make tableaus about the story in the community. Should this actually be more explicit than that so that it's more descriptive from when they look at this lesson plan? Um, but I, I don't know if everyone knows what a tableau is. Um, so maybe like frozen picture could be right if we want to like avoid jargon sure. thinking that a teacher is reading these plans i don't want to say things that haven't been either ways we can help in the story of the community. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we have other questions about this or at least the steps so far? Santa has a question about being explicit, how levels relate in the warm up to tableau. 
Um, <laughs> no, Santa, I think you're modeling that in the lesson, in the activity when you when you arrive. Um, but I think just from a planning standpoint, as an artist and a planning standpoint, understanding how your objectives relate to your warm up, relate to your activity, relate to your reflection, right? I'm just, I'm wanting more, um, Janika and I are wanting more to, for you to first make that connection, to make sure that it flows all the way through. Jill Breton had shared that students will gain an understanding that good deeds are something that is shared by other students who believe in creating a better world. Can I ask a quick question? Sure. Um, is this related to each individual different, um, our individual, um, what we're doing, our individual, um, class. I don't know why I'm thinking I'm getting a brain. Like, are we doing this, the, what, what you're saying to each individual class? Cause like, this would be kind of tough pertaining to what I'm doing. That's all I'm saying. Like the only thing I could, is that what you're saying? Like to have that, like, what can students do to, um, help their, you know, community? Is that pertaining to each individual? So it would be your individual program. Your lesson plan is about yes, whatever that's what I'm you're teaching. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. So because yeah. I'm a teaching artist for JDPP, this is my example of a program. Um, and this will be the one that I get to submit on their behalf. But you get to write your own for whatever program it is that you teach. And I believe. Yeah, okay. Just I just want to make sure. Program. Yep. What's that? Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So I stopped sharing so that we could have a more open discussion if there are questions like that um, and maybe ways that you all can help each other. I know we didn't quite get time to talk about transitions yet either between the different parts of your lesson, um, but I'd love to open the floor and hear some thoughts. Nick, I think Nick, you're, you're muted, muted if you're trying to talk. There. Is that all right? I think I have a good example. Is that, it's just thinking about that and going, okay, since mine has to do with a lot of climate and, um, you know, uh, adapting to your environments and stuff, maybe that would be something the kids would think like, because I always, I always give an example and say, you know, what do you do to change when your environment changes? And I always put it on them because really they're making fictitious animals that are uh, adapting to their environment. So the only thing I could think of with what you kind of just um, implied was maybe think of ways they could help because I always say like, okay, well, how do you adapt when it's the winter, what do you have? So this way they could think of it like an animal and they say, you know, I wear gloves or I wear, you know, uh, a hat. So maybe, you know, I'm just trying to relate it to what you guys were doing and say, maybe they could do that with like, think of like homeless people or helping. I don't know if that's kind of the way, the way you guys are going with that. Like, what can you do in your community that would, you know, well, you don't have to relate yours to that question at all. Those are my objectives for this particular program and this one lesson that I'm doing, right? Okay. All yeah, right. yours is whatever yours might be. You might have geometry in the room. We might be learning different animals and who has spots. We might be sorting things. Others might be dancing or learning music. So whatever your objectives are, that is great. It's okay. just a matter of your um, activities, whatever you're planning to do with them to reach that end goal, you just want them to be in alignment. Okay. Cool. Thank you. I see Barbara. You got it. Unmute, Barbara. Unmute yourself. I have a question that may or may not relate a lot to other people, so I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. But because I only do integration programs and I do different topics, depending on what the teacher's 
what unit. So when I'm writing one sample lesson plan for one day of one grade level, I'm confused a little bit as to how, I mean, I can pull that out and I can say seventh grade science and, you know, um, atoms and whatever, you know, I can do that, but it feels like because my programs, it feels like teachers might look at that and narrow their focus to thinking that's all I do topic wise. And so that may be a question that I need to discuss with you guys outside of this, but it it's hard for me to figure out, I can do a lesson plan, uh, you know, I can pick one thing, but I do such a wide range when I when somebody picks my program and I meet with them and we choose a topic and, you know, that I just have a question as to how well that's going to represent the program. I think that's a totally valid question. Um, and for me, who also like teaches on behalf of Heartbeat Ensemble, that'll be a question that I'll ask too. Um, so yeah, I think we should keep revisiting that because the topics do change, right? Especially for integration programs. Yeah. But this is supposed to be, Emily, my understanding, an example. This is just a taste, just one day. This is something that we did, an exemplar. Here's the lesson plan. But know that it's customizable. Yep. You're, yeah, you're right on track, Tanika. And I, I think, Barbara, for your example, you know, if it is theater is the art form perhaps there are consistent theater there's one consistent theater objective you're reaching but then maybe the science objective is evolving based on the teacher that's bringing you in for integration specifically that has a planning meeting connected to that program just to let folks know um, about integration program that's a there's a pre-planning meeting and, and in addition, on those types of lesson plans, because Barbara, that is a great uh, question that you bring up, you can put some language on there that this particular program is fully customizable based on a planning meeting that will be had with the artist and the uh, classroom teacher. So you can put that right on the lesson plan so that they know, okay, this is, you know, a, kind of a, a skeletal structure, if you will, of the lesson and we'll fill in the meat of it once we have that planning meeting. I saw Abdu Sar's hand and then Kaim Kelly will be next. Hi, I'm Clara. I'm here for Abdu. Hi, Clara. Um, so he's a dance teacher um, primarily, and I'm finding some of these verbs um, on the Bloom's taxonomy to be really heady. And I'm wondering um, if, if you could offer any help um, with any other suggestions for some of the categories that would be more um, applicable to like movement education and somatically embodied <clears throat> knowledge, for example, like the category. Um, and also my question is, is, um, is it important to use all of the categories? So like for the understand category, for example, I'm not seeing any that really stand out that would be usable to in movement education, like explain, how do you explain physically like through dance you don't really paraphrase through dance you don't report well describing that could come later in the um reflection section maybe um mm -hmm. if you were offering them time to reflect later they could describe what they had experienced sure. um summarize like is that kind of hitting the nail on the head um i and practicing could come through the application the analyzing, um, organizing, that's kind of the um, composition or if they get a chance to choreograph their own piece, that doesn't seem really analytical to me though. Is it important to um, implement all of these categories? I don't think so, but I think having variety is the important yeah. part. Yeah, right. okay everything to be identified, but I think you're right, constructing and putting some of those choreographies together, even if they're small routines, each student comes up with their 16 counts, that's something. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So variety, but not necessarily everything here is gonna to apply to every 
curriculum. Okay, thank you. And I think what's so great and important about the arts learning and arts integration is that we're not just memorizing and repeating what we learn, but we're delving deeper when students actually apply their knowledge and create something new based on what you've presented to them, right? That's reaching that deeper level of understanding, embodying a vocabulary word, or to creating a new animal creature based on its habitat, right? We're applying our knowledge and creating something new. So I would say that's probably the round, the categories that most arts live in. Hi. Hey, I just wanted to mention something about the previous question um, that I feel like a, a lot of teaching artists have asked me about that same, that same question of, um, you do so many different things, of course, by nature, because we're artists, right? Our whole thing is doing things and adapting and being creative. So there's a lot of anxiety about making a lesson plan and then having people think that you just do that thing that you wrote on a piece of paper. And I think it, it's helpful to know that like if you're if you're trying to be noticed by teachers that you haven't worked with before, just do a simple lesson plan. That's something that you would do with any teacher. Don't do your deepest, craziest, most amazing thing. Do the simple thing that lets them know like, oh, this person can do a lesson plan and demonstrate art. And they understand that students have a limited attention span, right? And then once you're in the class, you never do the lesson plan. You always do like the basic objectives and what it starts with. And then you just be brilliant and the students are brilliant and you do other things, right? When a lot of, I think what happens is when you work with teachers and they're pressed for time, they're like Janika said earlier, they're not necessarily going to read through all of this, right? And they're not going to want them. They're not concerned with all of the jargon of you trying to impress them. But they, once you've worked with them before, they're prob you're probably going to work with teachers you've already worked with. So then it becomes more for you. This is a good exercise for just saying, what's my objective? How much time am I going to spend on stuff? And completely allow yourself to change when you're actually in the classroom because it's impossible to stick to a lesson plan. In Hartford public schools, from my experience, so I would say just to release and to breathe easy about it, just use it as like an exercise about timing and how much you're going to listen to the students and how much you're going to be speaking to the students. And I think in terms of um, it shifting a little bit, depending on how that pre-meeting goes, whatever that conversation is, if that topic changes or whatever, even for this, the book does not stay the same every year. It changes for JDPP, right? So I kind of know the order. I know we're going to do a warm up. I know we're going to have to do tableaus. I know I'm teaching them 16 counts and how to make shapes, right? But the book is going to change. So perhaps in my lesson plan, um, and Emily, maybe we can talk more about what this would look like in, in the final version of this for that activities part to just say, this will vary depending on year or on number three, maybe I'll put an asterisk. The book will change depending on this conversation, right? Um, but that the order is there. The, the skeleton, the outlines, the timings of what's going to happen is predictable. Yep, I'm just gonna echo and raise up what Kaim said. Think of this more as an exercise and and practicing thinking about an objective tying to an activity tying to some reflection questions and again with Janika raising that up um this is a skeleton it is not set in stone we're not publishing it and that's all you can do this is an exercise right now
Just checking for other questions. Okay, we see Leslie. Sorry, I'm just a little brain dead today. I mean, I've been working, working since early this morning. So my brain isn't thinking that well, but I'm reacting to like that book you had and what you were doing with the tableau. And I, I mean, it was so, I get inspired by hearing what other, his fictional animals. And I appreciate what Kaim said about not to worry, not to get um, fixated that this is a, a polished thing that has to, you know, be adhered to. But I'm I'm at a basic thing where I feel a little caught because I haven't decided. I'm torn between which play that I do or story to do. So I'm not making much progress because I haven't made that decision. I have to go internal and get there. So I can't like quickly write anything if I if I'm stuck in like which one. So that's not very productive. So I think before the next meeting, I mean, what is our deadline? Sometimes I work under deadlines. Okay, you have to have this done and then I will do the work in advance rather than, I mean, if we're improv that's one thing, but if we, I should have chosen, I know that, but I, it would have been, but I'm learning and observe, and I just want to know the next, by the next time we all meet, I've got to do my homework and make a decision and, focus is because otherwise it's I mean I'm learning but that was when are we doing this by what are we supposed to hand something over by the end of this session can you so, hear me yes oh. we did we heard you Leslie thank oh, you I was just talking. It's oh <laughs> yes we were able to hear you so in in short and as I said earlier it's in the near future, and I know it's not a, a definitive date right now, and it's because we don't have one. It's it's something that we are going to be moving towards, but we're going to do it slowly because it is going to ultimately be a huge transition for everyone, and we don't want to interrupt the flow of the teaching artists and of the organization. So in time, maybe another year, year and a half out. So what I will say is for the start of next school year, no one would be required to have a lesson plan in the database. That is something that right now is not very realistic right now because we need to make sure that all of our teaching artists on our roster are up to speed, have watched the videos, feel comfortable with putting together a lesson plan um, or a planning guide for their programs. And so we're looking at possibly like a year and a half. And I say it in a half because that half year would be probably about the springtime where we can really get everyone ready so that when we open up the portal in the or the database that summer, um, everyone will be briefed and have that solid understanding of the expectation of the organization in terms of what your lesson plan or planning guide should look like and how to go about uploading it on the onto the database. So myself um, and the org, we will slowly guide you, but we want to scratch the surface right now um, to give you an understanding, an idea of where we as an organization are going to be moving, but we're all going to be doing it um, slowly so that it is not a major interruption to what is already going on, um, you know, with the organization and with our teaching artists. Thank you. Thank you for explaining. Sure. So you have some more think time. <laughs> okay. I, I would say as a practice, right? Not set in stone, something for you, pick something, do the hamburger yeah. activity, do today's activity, submit those for us to take a look through so that you're not at square one when we get to, as Aisha said, um, uh implementing something that that would be more visible to the public so i mm -hmm. encourage you perhaps maybe it's the most recent program you've just done because it's fresh in your mind could be could be a good way to go but don't do the hamburger one when you're hungry no <laughs> <laughs>
I see Clara's hand Bless again. You. Hi, can we hand in um, several plans, proposals? Can we have a couple on display? Because I'm working on like two or three simultaneously. Um, he usually teaches different dances depending on, you know, what which age level he's at and what's going on and the class. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And also, do we have to turn it in the hamburger form or can it be in this other kind of template idea? That's a good way to think about it, but do we have to? No hamburgers allowed. Yeah. No, no, no hamburgers allowed. Okay. <laughs> not even to you. I mean, I know not on the website eventually, but <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Whatever template makes sense for you to hand it in. Okay, thank you. Barbara, was your question answered? You're, you were asking, is this replacing current descriptions, et cetera, on a database? I guess the answer is we don't have that answer yet. This is, again, yeah. a practice. Yeah, that's what I got from okay. it. So just appreciating the, the thought process that we're going through related to any of our programs um, that will be used, you know, utilized in the database somehow in the future. It's just helping us get our thoughts together in that vein. And also it, it helps because um, teachers, I mean, a lot of teachers are used to working with teaching artists now, but there's always new teachers. There's always people who aren't necessarily. And so to see it in that form um, lets them have the security that the teaching artists understand teaching from their side too and allows for the communication, even in integration with the initial planning meetings, I imagine it will help the um, that whole process of discussing for how, kind of builds that trust from the beginning, I think. I want to be mindful of the time and we're coming up on that five o'clock time. Mm -hmm. I'll just allow another 30 seconds or so to give any teaching artists an opportunity to either unmute yourself or um, put a question into the chat. There's a question from Sano, which is something we're definitely thinking about, um, concern about posting lesson plans. And is this material that's yours, that copyrighted? Are you giving material away? All good questions and things that we're thinking about. And um, so thank you, Sano, for raising that question. Yes, thank you for raising that question. We will mull everything over. We we are giving and we, we're having conversations about this and, and how we're going to upload things into the database and, and what should be put on and what should be confidential. And there will be opportunities where we will be reaching out to you for questions, comments, and concerns. We want to be able to do this together. Um, because it is the best way to be able to market your programs and to make sure that you all feel comfortable with what is being um, displayed or advertised to the public. So um, again, we're we're not going to be doing this, you know, behind closed doors. We're going to make sure that we are upfront um, and having these conversations and dialogues with you all, so that you all know what is going on, and so that we can um, solicit your feedback as well. So what you have to say is extremely important to us in terms of how we operate. I do believe Aisha is collecting lesson plan. So if you feel like you're at an amazing stage right now, something that you like feedback on or you want to share, I'm happy to review as well. Send them in. 
I'm assuming everybody has your email, Aisha. Yes, everyone should definitely have my email. Um, but yes, if you can, please, and it doesn't have to be tomorrow, it doesn't even have to be the beginning of next week. But as you continue to um, work on your lesson plans, especially through what you've learned today through session two, if you can send those over to me, we do review them um, and Janika will have access to. And if you're looking for feedback, we certainly can and we'll provide you with the feedback. But if you can send those over to me, even if you made three changes, three word changes, um, we'd appreciate it. So um, again, no, no timeline, but when you can, um, just don't forget, because I'll send you an email. Thank you. Do we have any final questions, comments, or concerns from the group? Uh, Kaim, I see your hand raised. Go ahead. Sorry, I was just um, writing in the chat, but yeah, you can sell your lesson plans, and um, that is a good, like publishing in books. I know some teachers have done that. That's a good way to timestamp that it's your material. But again, I would say, for something like this, you're making a simple lesson plan. That's an example of what you do. And then if you're teaching one topic, like yes. snow, when you meet, right? Because usually you meet with teachers before you actually do the lesson. And the teacher goes, oh, I like this snow thing, but can you do fire or rain? And then you say, yes, right? So you don't, I would never give away like my most precious secret teaching methods you know i would just give enough to show that like i got this is how long the typical class is going to go these are the objectives that we're going to reach and then i use my techniques to help if a certain student needs to be taught in a different way you figure that out in the classroom so it's not even worth divulging all your secrets in the lesson plan anyway um because it's another thing that I think we, we stress about a lot. Um, so that's my advice on that. Just to give an example, knowing that like both in the class and in your teacher's meeting, if you have a great relationship, you're going to change what you do before you go into class and definitely when you're in the class. So it's just giving an example. Um, and maybe an example that's a prototype. So if you do switch from snow to fire or lions to tigers, you're following a similar flow for yourself. Yes, there's only one unique you that can deliver your magical lesson in your way. So I think even if you're given a very simplified steps, the, the magic that you bring into the classroom will always be yours and can't be replicated. You are the secret sauce. Nicholas, was that a hand? Yes. Um, I'm unmuted myself. So hopefully I'm so um yeah, he he makes a lot of sense that like when you go in, you kind of improvise and you kind of read the room a little bit, especially when you're in Hartford. I know that, especially now teaching full time in Hartford, it, it's it's gotta be um a lot of it is on the fly. You can have a lesson, you can have everything written down, everything you want to do and you still have to kind of come up with your own, you know, like on the spot is you're not, you're never going to know what you're going to get until you get there sometimes. So that's always good. And it's good to have that experience. Um, I'm just wondering if I should rewrite this whole program based on what I've gotten, which is only today. Cause I don't have the first part with the Hamburg thing that you guys were talking about. I mean, I could look back on it, but I have, it, it seems to me almost like, you're asking us to kind of revise it with these now, this, you know, um, interjecting some of this stuff that you're putting in. Is that basically what we're doing? Because I kind of want to know, do I have to rewrite this whole thing? Or is this, should I go on what I have already? Because what I have is working. So why would I change it? Kind of, you know what I mean? I mean, I hate to be blunt, but that's the way I'm feeling. Why would I change something that works? It works so well. They hired me from, from, from watching the program. So they must have been pretty happy with what they saw. And, and I've gotten nothing, but you know, I'm not, 
I'm not blowing myself up. I've just got really great feedback from what we've been putting out from the teachers. I, I don't know if they tell you guys that, but they tell us how they really like how the, pro, the, the whole program flows. And so I just want to know if, if you think that we are doing it correctly, why would we change it? So, so Nick, we're not asking you to change the program at all. We're not asking you to change the program. We are looking to creating a, a plan, a guide, just from beginning of your program to the end to give your teachers um, an, an understanding or an idea of what to expect when you come into their classroom. So when you go into your classroom and you are presenting your program, we don't want you to change a thing. Do your thing. But your guide in terms of what you're marketing on the database, we would like for it to look different than what it looks like now on the database. So more of, you know, uh -huh. from eight to 815, we're gonna be doing a, a warm up or we're doing a reading. So it's just the language that, you know, that you're gonna be changing a bit, but your actual program, the execution of your program is not and should not change whatsoever. Okay, oh, I just wanna be clear, thank you. Yeah. All right, do we have any other questions? See you now. All right. Well, I will hang on for another couple minutes um, offline here or on, on the Zoom if anyone needs to hang around. But thank you so very much for your time, for your participation today. Thank you, Janika, um, for just being super awesome and amazing and a wonderful facilitator. The next... Um, Meeting will be in May. It's escaping me at the moment, but in May. Um, so I'll be sending out um, invitations closer to that time. Seventh? Is that a seven, Emily? <laughs> May 7th. Thank you. So May 7th, we'll be back here on May 7th. Certainly you will hear from me before then. Um, please email me your lesson plans when you get a moment um, and reach out at any time. Um, and if there's no other questions, comments, or concerns, we will go ahead and end this meeting. Um, I will be sending the video out uh, before the week is out, the video recording um, to everyone. So if you want to go back and, and check something, um, you'll always have access to, it'll be plugged on, put up on YouTube, and I'll send you all the link before the week is out. All right. Thanks, everybody. There was a question about when would we like lesson plans. I think if you're picking one program and going through this series with Janika by the, after May 7th and you've done all the parts, you should have something completed. Um, if you want to submit pieces beforehand for us to look and then you have your one sample example that you've gone through, I think after May 7th is a good time frame for that. All right. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful night. Thank you. Good night, everyone. <laughs>I just I wanted to apologize really quickly to Nika. Like I was in and out because I was picking my son up. So I was catching most of it and, and, and going through. So I'm looking forward to the video afterwards and reviewing. Um the I, I'm a, I'm